Um, my name is Joe Ryland. I was born in Kinapuru Hospital on the 16th of May 1966 and I was brought up in the creek. My earliest memory was would be playing with the playing at the park that's opposite the shops. You got Mungaven Hall and then if you're looking across from the shops to the right there's a park. And this, they used to have this, um, these tunnels there. And I remember I oh, probably would have been about maybe six, crawling through the tunnels. That's my earliest memory. That would have been probably about 71. Lived in Champion Street. Um, went to Cannons Creek School, Brandon Intermediate, Poirot College. Yeah, nah, that's my earliest memory in Mungavin. Come out one time, they used to have um, movies there opposite in the Mungavin Hall. They used to have movies there every Sunday night. But when we were 13, we were coming back from the rec centre and we were walking up Mungavin. Got to Mungavin Street, we were all hungry. We were just been, been playing basketball. I looked down on the ground and there's this five dollar note. So I went straight across the shop and bought fish and chips. The guy, the guy that stand, stands out the most in my memories was the old, old fellow that used to run the four square. He'd like, you'd walk in, you'd buy something, and he'd like be watching you like a hawk. And he had to, he had to, to be honest. And then you'd pay for your stuff and he'd go, do you have anything else in your pockets? No, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Let me search your pockets. You're not searching my pockets. You're not a policeman. Let me search your pockets. And what are you going to do if we don't? <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah. had nothing in our pockets. Well, I had nothing in my pockets. My friends may have, but I had nothing in my pockets every time he asked me. It was funny because you used to be able to name all the houses where everybody lived, you know. And you get them on Gavin Ave. Just as you get around, get around the corner from, just after Severs Grove, and just get around the corner by the, by the softball park in the rugby grounds, the softball park. Boy, just as you get around the corner by the softball park, he's around that corner and there's the whipperatas. Because you, you, we all knew each other, so you knew where everybody lived. So, um, my earliest, what I can say about the creek, and it's real positive, you felt safe for everywhere, everywhere you went um, in Porirua because you knew everybody. And you, like, it had a pretty rough, we, like, we, had, got a, we had a pretty rough, like, um, rough, rough reputation, but yeah, you always felt safe because you knew everybody. You can go knock on any door. Hey, bro, come on in. <laughs> oh, mate. <clears throat> used to be the used to be like Porry School, the um, ambulance station. Doctor Bruce's. That was our one of our family doctors, and this bookshop. And like when we were about eight, because back in those days they just had penthouse and playboys out on display, and you could just walk in and open up, and we just walk in. I opened it up one time and flicking through this magazine and this woman comes up behind me and I'm, I'm about I'm about 11 and my mate's about 12 and she says, are you two 18? And we walked up, yep, I'm just going on reading. Oh well, yeah, got kicked, we got kicked out. But there used to be, after that sometime about, maybe about 83, was, I just had my first job and I was coming back from work and the bookshop, Became some sort of sports shop by that stage. And they used to sell um, well, my sporting gears and that. And I, I bought in there and bought a um, air canister, a, a gas canister um, slug gun, pellet gun there from there. It was quite cool. Yeah. And then it was the, t uh, then it was the, um, then it was the uh, clothing stores next to the bookshop. Oh, well, all sorts of things gonna come flooding back, eh? Really, um, yeah, Mrs. Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Hodges from Brandon Intermediate. Mr. Hodges is still there. He, they taught my oldest, older brother Jimmy. He's eight years older than me. My two sisters, who were seven and six years older than me. Um, Mrs. Hodges, oh, they taught my sister Fiona, I think. My brother Sid. And then... When I, by the time when I got intermediate, Mrs. and Form 2, Mrs. Hodges taught me. They taught my, um, Mr. Hodges taught my nephew. So 
So I think he's, they've taught about three generations of our family. Yeah, no, it's quite cool. So like, when I think back, you just think, just think gosh, where did all those years go, man? It's like, it's just like a world away. It's one of those kind of, it was one of those kind of places you think, like especially being brought up on the creek where there's a lot of state housing and that, and you look at the, look at this place and think, I want a house like that when I get older. Walking through the creek, seeing all the graffiti and uh, all the bars on the windows and blah, blah, blah. And you get to a place like that, it's like idyllic, you know. You're right in the middle of Pora and here's this beautiful estate with all these gardens and, you know, and the house and, you know. Uh, the Wiparata family, they were a very important family to us. They, they, they were raised with all, all my older brothers and that. His brother Daniel died, they, they, they lived on Mungavin. Um Champion Street well, was right from the right from the corner of Hereford and Champion was Mr. Huriwai. Uh, I used to go to school with all his, all his sons, and, and then there was the McGillies, Everybody, it's like I said, everybody you knew everybody in Poro, and that was right down to Mungavin, Gear Terrace, up Gear Terrace. Um, you knew everybody. That was like. We're just one big family, basically. Oh, I feel proud, man. I feel proud to say I'm from Poro. But, you know, Donald Trigger, he coached the, in the 90s, he coached the New Zealand softball team, men's softball team, to three consecutive world titles. But, you know, we got all kinds of people coming out of Poro. Street 
and put it up. Oh, sister, champion street, and put it up.